G'day everyone, SGD here. I think it's safe to say that seasons 1 and 2 of the original Transformers cartoon are vastly more important to the brand as a whole than season 3. While Transformers the movie has become a cornerstone of the community, the IP and wider pop culture, it was also something of a misstep that has had effects on the brand till this day and always will. So join me today as we discuss a character born of the film whose very existence was a mistake, Ultra Magnus. Beyond Good, Beyond Evil The Transformers the movie is a rather interesting film in retrospect. Most of the movie's iconic scenes happened with the cast of season 1 and 2. The main goal of the film was to clear out much of the die clone and microchange toys to make way for the first real Transformers. Toys designed for the brand, instead of being repurposed from older toys or designs. The result put the brand on a downward slide. The fact that the film's iconography ends with Starscream's death 35 minutes in, the exact point where the film becomes squarely about the new Transformers original characters, speaks volumes. While it would take 4 more years to die in the US, and 10 years to recover with Beast Wars, the damage the film did is self-evident. Though, not everything can be squarely blamed on the film. 1988 introduced possibly the worst play pattern in the original line, Pretenders. The move to MicroMasters and the introduction of Action Masters changed the very nature of the brand, and the emergence of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles would have been the nail in the coffin that was US G1. Production on Transformers the movie commenced in August of 1984, before the show even aired. Hasbro dictated the characters and how they were to be used, with Ron Friedman giving it a story, with Flint Dilly both cleaning up Ron's script and introducing parts of his own rejected script. The movie was always conceived as a way to push Hasbro and Takara's first toys truly created for the Transformers brand. This was necessary as 1985's assortment used the remaining Diaclone toys Hasbro was willing to use. Trains allegedly sold poorly outside of Japan, and Hasbro didn't seem to like using microchange toys too much. This is also one of two years where Hasbro would license non-Takara toys for Transformers, Jetfire, Omega Supreme, Shockwave, etc. 1986 would give us holdovers from Diaclone, an unproduced subline called Jizai Gatai, or Limitless Combination. What became the Scramble City play pattern, Octane also has its origins in an unproduced Diaclone toy. But with just one more toy and a bunch of retooled mini vehicles also released this year, Diaclone was bled dry. Hasbro needed to design new toys for Transformers or the brand would die. This also gave Hasbro the opportunity to completely refresh the line with a new cast and new direction. While it's more common today for lines to refresh after the initial audience has aged out, the thought had to be going through the minds at Hasbro. New cast, new audience, more toys sold. It didn't work out that way. Season 3 did not capture a new audience, and the death of Optimus Prime left a generation in tears. I can't deal with that right now. The call to kill Optimus Prime seemingly has its roots in G.I. Joe. Despite releasing later, G.I. Joe the movie was in production earlier than the Transformers movie. G.I. Joe was considered by writer Buzz Dixon to have an older audience than Transformers, and with the retirement of his toy in 1986, it was decided to kill off Duke in the movie. The G.I. Joe audience could cope with it, as Transformers was also going through a brand refresh, Hasbro sought to do the same to Optimus Prime. Writer Ron Friedman told them that this was a bad idea, but Hasbro liaisons to the higher-ups refused to pass on his concerns. Ron has got on record stating that his intent with Optimus Prime was to be a father figure. This is part of Ron's writing style where he allocates each character a family member archetype so that younger audiences can better resonate with them. When Ron knew that he had to kill off Optimus Prime, 
The scene was given the gravitas it deserved, and it sure made an impact. It's not that hard to find Gen Xers stating that they cried when first seeing the film. To this day, Hot Rod blaming, the act of blaming Hot Rod for Prime's death, is still a prominent meme among this section of the fan base. With the back two thirds of the film, you can see Ron's writing style come to the forefront with the 86 cast and how the Dinobots have been reinterpreted. Grimlock being closer to a dog, Hot Rod an older brother, RC an older sister, Springer her boyfriend, and Cup a grandfather. The family dynamic writing style is fairly easy to see, and ultimately, the story is one of a young man becoming the patriarch of the family after the death of his father. This finally brings us to Ultra Magnus. Ultra Magnus is a lot harder to place on that family dynamic, if not impossible. An uncle would be my best guess. The character is largely defined by his dialogue in the film, feeling unworthy of a leadership position, trying to get out of it, and struggling to cope with the pressure associated with the role. A character of self-doubt with a large potential for personal growth. If that description sounds familiar, it's because that's also Season 3 Rodimus Prime. While Hot Rod has the archetype of the failed hero going through the journey to return a king and save his people, Rodimus Prime in Season 3 finds himself struggling with that leadership position and comparing himself to Optimus Prime, continuously doubting his abilities in his new role. This in turn would change the position of Ultra Magnus within the cast dynamics to being the second in command of the Autobot forces and serving as a mental role to Rodimus Prime. This in turn lands Ultra Magnus squarely standing on someone else's toes, Cup. With Cup being positioned as a much older man with lots of life experience and a giver of advice to the younger generation, he was already allocated that mental role. If you want that battlefield warrior out of Ultra Magnus, you also have Blur and Springer. Springer is probably the more ideal choice given his cool factor. From a writing perspective, Ultra Magnus is unnecessary. Ultra Magnus solely exists to have an Autobot toy of a comparable size and price point to the new Decepticon leader Galvatron. Megatron was always intended to become Galvatron. That was a dictate from Hasbro. Ultra Magnus, on the other hand, started life as a character named Magnus who became Ultra Magnus when he received the Autobot Matrix of Leadership, but would die permanently at the hands of Galvatron on the planet of junk. This character was likely never intended to get a toy. Things changed, however. The script was revised, and Hasbro wanted to sell a new toy. Their final Diaclone toy. The End of Diaclone In August of 1984, Takara would release their final toy for the Car Robo subline of Diaclone, Powered Convoy. This toy is what Hasbro would redeco and release as Ultra Magnus in their Transformers line. Powered Convoy has a very interesting history behind it due to its deep ties to the Battle Convoy toy from 1982, the toy that would become Optimus Prime in 1984. Powered Convoy was, as the name suggests, a powered up form of the Battle Convoy toy. The Battle Convoy set came with a trailer that opened up into a repair bay and launcher for smaller car robo toys, what became the Autobot cars. It also came with a small buggy for carrying Diaclone pilots that can also carry Convoy Robo's gun. Functionally, the Battle Convoy set was more of a playset than an individual robot release. Contrast this with the Powered Convoy set. The box trailer would become a car carrier. The buggy would become the Red Powered Buggy, now capable of transformation into a robot mode. Most notably, however, the Convoy Robo toy was now blue instead of red and would combine with the trailer to form Powered Convoy Robo. Powered Convoy has its roots in the original intent for Battle Convoy. While there is a prototype of Battle Convoy much closer to the final toy and likely the origin of the large antenna as depicted on Marvel Comics number 1, 
That toy is the result of the initial design being scrapped and the concept being completely reworked. The original intent for Battle Convoy was a car carrier with a blue robot component to carry other car robo toys. This is exactly what Powered Convoy is, right down to the red head of the robot mode, but it's also so much more. The Battle Convoy toy can carry one car robo inside of its trailer, but not only can Powered Convoy carry four car robos, but it can also be reconfigured to deploy a jet robo. Compare this to the initial Battle Convoy design being able to carry two car robo and needing to detach the lower legs to become the trailer's wheels. You can literally see the evolution of that original design into something they could do with the time given, then over the following two years being returned to in a much better form. Powered Convoy as a concept has lived on throughout Transformers history. The Unicron Trilogy would utilize the concept of combining with the trailer to form a super mode in each of its series, and it's become a normal play pattern for Optimus Prime toys. Transformers would first introduce the concept in 1988 when Optimus Prime would make his triumphant return to the toy aisle with Power Master Optimus Prime, but Powered Convoy itself was never used in its original context, and all of these aforementioned toys build off of Battle Convoy, not Powered Convoy. Hasbro always intended to use that toy as a new character, Ultra Magnus. Powered Prime In an interview for TFCon 2004, former Hasbro executive George Dunze would say that the movie characters were the weakest part of the brand as of 2004 and did the most damage to the brand of anything by that point. While he seemingly blames the move to futuristic vehicles over the realistic toys of Diaclone and Microchange, the bigger issue was the death of Optimus Prime and the true intent of the film, replacing the cast. While many of us are likely fans of the film, its cast, and subsequently Season 3, it wasn't what the brand needed at the time, and it was a mistake conceptually. From Hasbro's perspective, how they used Powered Convoy is completely understandable. Optimus Prime was an expensive toy for the time, 24 USD, and had been discontinued in 1985. It would have been seen as the better choice to put out a new character rather than ask parents to buy a new iteration of Optimus Prime so soon after the original. One might be inclined to bring up Rodimus Prime as a counterpoint, it is literally the same character used twice in the same year, 1986, but Hot Rod retailed at 12 and Rodimus 15, both have a much lower price point. Mattel's Masters of the Universe line is in a similar situation, where Mattel would release four He-Man and Skeletor toys in the US during the original run, but they were either 5 or 6 USD, a much smaller ask of pocket money or parents. However, that also has another perspective. By releasing Powered Convoy as Optimus Prime, it keeps the character on store shelves. Back in those days, toys were available for two years, so this new toy would be stocked through 1987. This would give not only newcomers a chance to own Optimus Prime, but kids that got Optimus Prime in 1984 might be more inclined to have this new toy purchased for them by 1987. The time between releases would be large enough to warrant it, and those original toys might have been well loved by that time. Looking back now, how Megatron was handled, with him being damaged and becoming Galvatron, was exactly the treatment Optimus Prime needed. Take Powered Convoy, give him a new deco more in line with Battle Convoy and a new head. Make Power Master Optimus Prime two years before it happened. Have the quest of the film being the repair of Optimus Prime and the climax being the emergence of this new powered Optimus Prime toy. Build the super mode into the narrative. As the character was written as the fatherly archetype, having Optimus Prime carry what are essentially his children is thematically fitting. If anything, it was the Decepticons 
that needed the Autobot story arc of one of them filling the power vacuum after the death of Megatron. This kind of happens with Starscream, and I think the brand's story benefits from Starscream's death, along with the subsequent Ghost of Starscream story arc, but having another Decepticon take the reins and gaining a new form from Unicron feels more organic to their characterization. While a superfluous character born of misguided decisions, Ultra Magnus has evolved to become a character of value. Owed in part to the comics, animated, and prime, Ultra Magnus today is an iconic character of the Transformers brand. For a while, he was the default redeco of Optimus Prime, but has received many new toys over the past few years designed to be Ultra Magnus. In an interesting twist, Powered Convoy has in turn become the default redeco of Ultra Magnus. Saying that, you can't help but think, where would the brand be today had the movie been better conceived and Powered Convoy been used in its original context? The powered up form of the toy that became Optimus Prime. If you enjoyed today's video and want more Transformers content, be sure to like and subscribe. It helps out a lot. Till next time friends, this has been SGD and thanks for watching.